Within the brain, there is an area known as the substantia nigra. The majority of the dopamine producing cells lost with Parkinson's disease are found here. For the management of Parkinson's disease, your doctor may recommend the drug levodopa. Levodopa is converted in the brain into dopamine, helping restore dwindling levels of natural dopamine in the brain. Let's talk about how exercise affects levodopa and how that can improve the management of Parkinson's. Here we have arrived at a nerve synapse where the dopamine receptors can be seen on the postsynaptic cleft. With exercise, the dopamine binding potential at these receptors is altered, meaning the receptors can more effectively catch free-floating dopamine produced by levodopa, improving function and postural control. Think of it like this. If you take a bunch of kids and throw them a ball, some of them might catch it. If you throw more balls at them, more of them will be caught. Or, if you make the kids better at catching, then more balls will be caught, without having to increase the number of balls thrown. Exercise improves the catching of these receptors. This is why more dopamine is caught, and therefore utilized. Let's move on to the next one. Levodopa is usually administered orally, in the form of pills. For unknown reasons, Exercise increases the plasma concentration of levodopa, as well as the maximal concentration levodopa can achieve. This means the available levodopa for utilization in the brain is higher, making your dose more effective. This funny looking molecule is homocysteine. While it wasn't the purpose of this research, homocysteine levels were found to be elevated with levodopa dosage in one of our studies. Elevated homocysteine levels can be associated with increased risk for cardiovascular health problems. Exercise was shown to alleviate these elevated homocysteine levels, almost acting like a filter, removing homocysteine from the blood. However, it is important to remember, this finding was not associated with our research, but needed to be mentioned. While balancing on a ball might be a little extreme, Balance and impairment in persons with Parkinson's disease is related to a combination of both dopamine producing and non-dopamine producing lesions. Exercise can increase the function of both levodopa sensitive and levodopa resistant components and lesions. In addition to benefiting balance, exercise may influence the neuronal circuits involved in motor control, modulating motor performance and drug induced motor complications associated with levodopa. Don't worry, the substantia nigra pictured here isn't crying. Intensive rehab treatment involving repetitive exercise has improved its synthesis and release of endogenous dopamine. Increased endogenous dopamine improves motor performance and delays the increase in levodopa dosage seen with the progression of Parkinson's disease. This can be seen as beneficial as it reduces the side effects associated with levodopa dosage as well as improving the longevity of levodopa treatments throughout Parkinson's. Lastly, we arrive at the big boy, the brain. Exercise increases heart rate and blood flow. As a result, there's an increase in the transport and utilization of dopamine and levodopa across the blood-brain barrier. This reduces the amount of unused dopamine and levodopa in peripheral tissues. Similar to increasing plasma concentrations of levodopa, more dopamine and levodopa in the brain means that your medication lasts longer and is more effective. Congratulations, you've reached the finish line. Hopefully today's video was a little fun and especially informative. If you have any further questions regarding levodopa, it might be a good idea to bring these questions to your neurologist.